Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Susan, for the introduction and John Catuso for his overview of Liberty Property Trust. Let's give our speakers another round of applause. It is truly a pleasure to be here this afternoon to report out on the state of the city. Governor Florio, legislators, freeholders, members of council, residents, clergy, and business leaders. This is the sixth time that I have delivered my annual report on the state of the city as required by New Jersey State Statute, and I thank you for joining me here today. First, a heartfelt thank you to my executive team, cabinet members, city employees for creating, implementing, and improving policies that put Camden residents first. Second, a special acknowledgement and thank you to the Cooper's Ferry Partnership Board of Directors, my co-chair, Susan bass Levin, Anthony Pernell, and the dedicated team at Cooper's Ferry Partnership for all of their hard work and service to the residents of Camden. Please join me in giving them all a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to inform you that the state of our city is progressing and rising to new unprecedented levels of prominence never seen nor felt in decades. Camden is rising because we have partners at every level, from residents to government to businesses to nonprofits working together for Camden. In the book of Luke, chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, it says that the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard, and as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the seed that fell in good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Quite frankly, our collective efforts can be compared to the planting of a seed. We started this journey together when we planted the seeds of hope by fixing our finances and taking the bold move to enhance public safety with the creation of the Camden County Police Department Metro Division. We then nurtured the seeds when we utilized legislative tools to foster development, when we broke down silos in government, when we began to work together, and when we formed collaborations with partners for one cause, the cause of Camden. While planning and nurturing those seeds took some time, hard work, and patience, we are beginning to see our seeds grow. And you can just imagine Camden once our seeds begin to blossom and take root. Camden is rising, and we have become, as declared by President Obama during his visit last year, a symbol of promise for urban renewal a symbol of hope for residents that have been knocked down but never knocked out, a symbol of courage for fulfilling promises made even though the path ahead was difficult. From the beginning, Governor Christie saw the great potential in Camden and has on numerous occasions declared the progress and transformation Camden has undergone as a national model for distressed cities across this nation to emulate. Yes, Camden, New Jersey, the city invincible, is once again on the rise to greatness. As I reflected on all the exciting announcements we made in 2015, over $2 billion of real investments in Camden, I sat amazed just thinking of all the possibilities and opportunities in the realm of jobs and careers that will finally be realized for our residents. Camden is literally rising right before our eyes. This is undeniable. Today, as you drive through Camden, you hear pollens being driven in the ground. You see large cranes 
lifting steel beams in place. You see men and women wearing hard hats. You see roadway and infrastructure work being completed and visitors getting on and off our public transportation system. This is great energy happening in our city. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the sights and sounds of steel frames rising from the ground. These sights and sounds are the result of the foundation we set a few years ago when my administration stepped in to correct our finances and shifted to a new public safety paradigm of a county-led police department. And what you are now witnessing is the rise of brick and mortar beginning to fill our skyline. Yet, despite our progress, our city will fall flat if we fail to address an even greater need, and that is jobs for our residents. The old saying, if you build it, they will come, just isn't good enough. Yes, we need to build it, but we need to fill it with Camden residents. Thankfully, we've learned from our mistakes of the past. My administration, along with our partners, are working hard to ensure Camden residents are not forgotten, to make sure that Camden residents rise with their city, their home. And what better way to lift our residents than with an opportunity of a job right in their backyard. In fact, we have already seen many of our new and existing partners, such as Liberty Property Trust, located on the waterfront, Holtec, located in South Camden, the Sixers, located in Lanning Square, Contemporary Graphic Solutions, located in Centerville, EMR, located in Liberty Park, PCM, located in South Camden, Webimax, located on the waterfront, and many others employ Camden residents or utilize local Camden businesses on their projects. For instance, 21-year-old Tarek Ayers of Camden, who was actively looking for work, but was unable to land a job until he was connected with Joseph Gingoli and Son, the general contractor for the whole tech project through Gingoli's community outreach program called Competitive Edge. Tarek, who did not have any construction experience, was simply told to show up to the job on time, be willing to work hard, and good things will happen. Well, Tarek Ayers was slightly reluctant, but did just that. And today, Mr. Ayers is a member of the Dock Builders Union he is receiving high marks from his supervisors and fellow workers. And from what I hear, Joseph Jim Coley and Son is looking for more Tarek Ayers. Please join me in recognizing Mr. Tariq Ayers. In the <laughs> Mr. Ayers' story is just one of many Camden residents which demonstrates their hard work, determination, and God-given abilities to rise up and succeed. Now, for all of those who question whether these jobs are real, you don't have to take my word for it, but here are the facts according to the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development. In 2010, the unemployment rate in Camden was 18.3%. In 2011, it spiked to nearly 19%. And then in the following years, we began to see a downward trend. Last year, we ended with an unemployment rate of 11.8%, that is nearly seven percentage points lower from its highest point. Doubters may question, how can this be? Well, previous investments made by the Eds and Meds have played a large role in the physical redevelopment of Camden. The Eds and Meds are also the city's largest employers, approximately 12,000 employees, growing 25% from 2010 to 2014, and that is approximately 40% of all Camden jobs. And with all of the current projects in the pipeline, we can anticipate thousands of construction and permanent jobs in Camden. So are we content with an 11% unemployment rate? 
Absolutely not. But this downward trend demonstrates our progress is real and not fiction. And I remain optimistic that the unemployment rate will continue to decline. Although this is just the beginning, we need to look and think beyond the short-term successes and plan for long-term jobs and careers for our residents. We have to prepare our Camden residents and we have to elevate their ability to achieve and we must supply them with the tools to succeed. Let's face it, we can create all the jobs in the world, but if we neglect the quality of life in our neighborhoods, no one will want to remain in the city, nor will anyone want to move here. Robert Kennedy once said, and I quote, some people see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and say, why not? This is my dream for Camden, my end goal, and that is to establish vibrant communities where individuals will want to live, work, and raise their families. Many of you will agree that the hallmark of a successful and dynamic community includes a high achieving school system, whether it's through traditional charter or renaissance schools, we have to ensure our children and their families receive the very best education and social supportive services. There can be no doubt of the positive impact a school can have on a community. And one such example is the Kip Cooper Norcross Academy. Their unwavering commitment to the Cooper Landing Square neighborhood has helped to stabilize the lives of families living in that area. But it wasn't just the brand new building or classes that made the difference to those families. It has been the unwavering pledge to the community that Kip Cooper Norcross Academy made to invest resources and time beyond the classroom, whether it's a health fair or opening their doors to special events or a community block party. We are seeing a true heartfelt investment in children, youth, and families. And this investment in children, youth, and families is just as important as any dollar amount. It is our investment in people, human capital, that will truly make a difference and strengthen our efforts to raise Camden up. Investment in people, like Holtec's commitment to work with the Camden City School District to create a curriculum that will prepare Camden students for future careers at their state-of-the-art facility. It is the investment in people, like the partnerships between the city, the New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development, Camden County College, and YouthBuild to offer customized job training and preparedness programs for the real permanent jobs coming to Camden. In 2016, I look forward to offering expanded programming with our partners to reach even more Camden residents, such as the formation of the Residence Building Camden Task Force. Although I will have more information and details in the weeks to come, this task force will be charged to look into new employment and business opportunities for Camden residents and entrepreneurs. It is the investment in people, like our citywide job fair last year, which connected nearly 700 eager job seekers, of which more than 500 job seekers were Camden residents, with more than 50 companies from various sectors. Companies like PCM, Contemporary Graphics, and EMR were aggressively seeking to hire Camden residents. It is the investment in people that our unions are providing to build careers in the various trades. Now, one might ask, are these investments in people really paying off? Just ask Susanna and Samantha Colazzo, identical twins from the Kramer Hill neighborhood of Camden. They are the first two residents to be accepted into and enrolled in the Cooper Medical School of Roman University and are now in their second year.
these two young women came to Cooper Medical School following the completion of the pre-medical Urban Leaders Summer Enrichment Program, which encourages undergraduate students of various ethnic, cultural, and socioeconomic backgrounds to consider professional careers in health and medicine. And by the way, I should add that they are both graduates of the Dr. Charles E. Brin Medical Arts High School right here in Camden. So again, we want to encourage them. Keep up the good work, ladies. Stay and practice medicine in Camden. Camden, New Jersey needs you. As you can see, under my watch, we will never forget our residents. We will continue to invest in our residents from cradle to college to career and beyond. Camden cannot sustain growth without investing in our residents. To truly accomplish this effort, we must continue to collaborate with all of our many partners. Over the last six years, I am proud to say that my administration has worked hard to foster strong public-private partnerships with many in the room here today, like the state of New Jersey, PSENG, Cooper University Hospital, Rutgers University, Rowan University, Choose New Jersey, Cooper's Ferry Partnership, Holtec, Liberty Property Trust, Campbell's, Brandywine, Subaru, American Water, Center for Family Services, YMCA of Burlington and Camden County, the Chamber of Commerce of Southern New Jersey, and our Congress of Residents, faith-based and community-based organizations, and many others. I strongly believe in these dynamic collaborations, as well as a holistic approach to revitalization. And this is what is helping to transform Camden. We will continue to strengthen these partnerships to further enhance the existing initiatives and programs that have created an atmosphere for change. For instance, we will always look for innovative approaches and meaningful collaborations to improve public safety along with our police chief, John Scott Thompson, whether it's through new technology, community policing strategies, or deploying more officers in our neighborhoods. Public safety is and will remain a top priority. And public safety has been a major and vital component in fact, a major cornerstone in our foundation, which has allowed us to raise Camden up. We will continue to take advantage of the many federal opportunities granted to us when Camden was designated as a promise zone. This designation will undoubtedly build upon the foundation we set. As part of Camden's promise zone efforts, Powerport Camden, is providing its members with essential workforce development opportunities and connections to life skills support that they will carry with them as they enter into meaningful employment and post-secondary education. These young men and women, some of whom are re-entry youth, have tirelessly dedicated themselves to positively changing the communities in which we all share. They are tackling complex environmental challenges through projects focusing on water quality, stormwater management, and green infrastructure. Members of Camden Power Corps were able to put their skills to the test when they helped U.S. Senator Cory Booker and I shovel Camden's neighborhoods after last month's snowstorm. With the help of these superstars, some of our seniors were able to access their front steps and walkways. Our Power Corps Camden even assisted Lieutenant Governor Gudano and I repaint the North Camden Community Center along with our efforts to serve the community during Martin Luther King Day of Service. And I can tell you that whenever I speak with any one of these unsung superstars, they express such a positive attitude in the work that they are performing. Power Corps Camden has truly allowed them to not only create opportunities for themselves, but also to give back to their communities in an effort to build for the future. Please join me in recognizing Camden Power Corps.
in 2016 and beyond, we will continue to make neighborhood infrastructure improvements through the city's capital improvement plan and budget. The current plan represents a substantial but fiscally responsible investment of approximately $85 million over the first year and approximately $400 million over the statutory six-year period. These investments leverage current development actions of over half a billion dollars in any fiscal year within the lifespan of our capital program. Specifically, these investments range from street resurfacing and utility rehabilitation within our 19 neighborhoods where development plans are transforming the quality of life for our residents. Additionally, our infrastructure work will include rehabbing the city's six pumping stations. And to this end, I would like to recognize Director Ed Williams of Planning and Development and Uzo for our work with the Capital Improvement Plan. Please stand and be recognized. We will continue to stabilize our neighborhoods by improving our existing housing stock and adding new quality, affordable, market rate units that any homeowner would be proud to live in. We will complete our demolition initiative to remove unsafe and blighted properties throughout the entirety of the city of Camden. We will create additional placemaking and public art as a means to unite residents, workers, and visitors in Camden's civic spaces, as well as revitalize additional parks in the city like we did at Bonita Park in Kramer Hill and Pine Point Park in North Camden. And with municipal funding, we will continue to support our local small business community by deploying clean and safe services through the CSSD to many of the city's commercial corridors, including River Road, Broadway, Federal Street, Mounting from Avenue, and Haddon Avenue. And of course, we will continue to do everything within our power to offer local incentives through UEZ, power, facade improvement, and chip programs, which have truly, truly bolstered business in Camden. Just as small business owner Aaron Miller of Miller Fabricators, located in the Gateway neighborhood, who manufactures cabinets and other custom woodwork, or Mike Muniz of Market Street West LLC, who reopened an old Camden favorite, Hank's Bar and Grill in downtown Camden. Or Digna Garcia, owner of Rossi's Beauty Salon in Kramer Hill, who transformed a vacant, dilapidated building into a thriving, full-service salon. Or Tammy <coughs> Ham of Extreme, an apparel store in Whitman Park, which offers customers a selection of various clothing lines. Even those small businesses who may not have taken advantage of the local incentives have witnessed an increase in businesses as a result of the major development projects currently underway in our city. Working with our school district to improve educational outcomes for our children remains an important priority much in line with public safety. Initiatives like the parent centers the streamlining of the Camden enrollment process, Safe Corridor Program, the Camden Commitment Plan, along with other pioneering efforts to enhance their curriculum will be strengthened in 2016 and beyond. And of course, we will continue to partner with our anchor institutions, our EDS and MEDS, which have laid the foundation for the work that is ongoing in the city of Camden. For the first time in the history of Camden, we have a unique opportunity to prepare our residents to meet the growing employment health care demands of this region. Let me just give you one example. There is a tremendous need in Camden and the surrounding areas for entry-level medical assistance. While doctors and nurses are typically the focus of health care delivery services, many other medical occupations are essential. Healthcare organizations in this region are struggling to hire frontline staff with the right mix of skills and aptitude. Thankfully, the Rutgers University 
Rowan Camden Board of Governors just last year initiated a program to train and educate for free high school students in Camden to become medical assistants. In less than nine months, five students have been trained and educated. They are about to take their final exams and will soon be employed at hospitals throughout the city. I personally look forward to the next cohort of 10 students who have already been selected to go through the program. Proverbs 27 and 17 states, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this simple yet powerful message holds true to this very day. We cannot continue to grow, continue to rise, if we do not elevate each other or push each other to the next level of excellence. If we stray away from helping one another, then our efforts will be in vain. Many of us in this room have been through the good and the bad times in Camden, through many false starts and broken promises. But now, now is the time to stand proud, to stand as one, and to complete what we have started. Today, as I've outlined our successes and our vision for what is to come for Camden, it may seem that our work is done, but I submit to you today that our work is just beginning. And I leave you with this final thought in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Let us move Camden forward, for today Camden is rising. Thank you and God bless.